Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and this is our Wheelie TV news video. We of course talk about this week's news in terms of TV, we also give any updates on the channel and like pick our favourite episode of the week and all that kind of thing at the end. Uh, so that's what's coming up. There was new stuff this week, there was uh, big new stuff, there was The Handmaid's Tale from Hulu. They put the yep. first three episodes up. At the time of recording this, we've got the first two reviews up. The third one's coming... The third one will probably be up before this video goes up, actually. But we haven't watched it yet, so bear that in mind when we're talking about the best episodes. Yes, but the... Yeah, we haven't watched it yet, but the, the review for the third one will be up before this video goes up. We're just recording this first, but yeah, uh, that's, worth, that's worth mentioning. <laughs> uh, so that, that, was, that was new this week. Obviously, the CW shows all came back. We're talking Flash... Arrow, Supergirl, uh, and Riverdale as well, because that was even on a little break. Uh, so all that stuff came back, but the, the only new thing was uh, was Handmaid's Tale. I almost called it well, Handmaiden again. Uh, yeah, uh, we did also cover Dear White People. Oh, that was today. That was like very, very recently. That was I literally just published that video like ten minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you know, yeah. only thing we covered. Forgot it already. Yeah, yeah. So we we covered Dear White People, which is Netflix's new show. It's uh, they are. They were satirical comedy that they just put up. It came from a movie and a play. Uh, so th that's up. First review, that's up. So obviously we'll pick favourites at the end of the, end of the show, but that's that's the new things this week. Uh, no sort of updates. The, the only thing I'm supposed to mention is, is that we were so busy this week. It was a hectic week of TV. Uh, basically what's happened is, is like a couple of shows which should have been on in February got pushed back to April. A couple of shows that should have been on in the summer get pulled forward to April. And all of the network TV we were watching and CW and stuff like that is still on. As a and result, it, and, and especially we we just had that off for a month, so we kind of got used to yeah. without it. And then all of a sudden, it's nope, it's back in. Yeah, we we have a really the first two three weeks of May are going to be rough as well. We're going to, this week was a little bit more rough because we had three episodes of Handmaid's Tale. Obviously, yeah. going forward, it'll just be the one. But bloody Hulu. Yeah, but at least. After that, we'll see a bit of, a bit of levity in the schedule. But it, oh Jesus, this is a tough month for us in terms of schedule. So if things run a little bit late here or there, kind of thing, uh, just forgive us. Bear with us. We're we're working on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, we have to wrap it around life. So unfortunately, uh, life just gets in the way. Yeah. So we have everything. Anyway, let's talk about news. Let's talk about news things that happened this week. Yes. Uh, a couple of quick things. One that we really don't care about, but I saw it, so I thought I'd throw it in. Uh, Into the Badlands has been renewed for season three at AMC. Uh, it's getting a longer season as well. It's getting 16 episodes for season three coming in 2018. Uh, we watched two episodes of that when it started and found it to be very mediocre. And yes. Left it and was like, nah, we're done. But I seen it, I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in the news, why not? I, I was morbidly curious when they added Frost for season two and he's got a big beard and he seems to be enjoying it. But not not morbidly curious enough to actually watch it. Nah, I, I just thought it was kind of tedious, and I thought the fighting was okay, but the everything else, I thought it, it was it was especially bad because it felt like a really bad version of the comic book Lazarus in terms mm. of the way the world was set up. Uh, so it just it felt even by comparison to that, it just made it worse. So, uh, but there you go. Uh, also, another quick bit of news. This is a bit happier for us because we liked the uh, the early pilot of this. That was the tick. Because uh, Amazon do the pilot season where they put out the pilots way in advance of the shows actually even being green lit. Never mind getting the full season. But we are getting the complete first season of the tick on the twenty fifth of August, uh, which is good. I'm glad that it snuck in just before we get out of summer. Yeah, if, if that had been like twenty fifth of September, oh, some exec at Amazon should be fearing for their lives. There's a ginger pit bull coming your way. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, so that's cool. Uh, looking forward to trying that out. Uh, I Love Dick, which was in the same batch. Has got a date? I don't know. If, is Jean-Claude Van Johnson the only one now that doesn't have a date from that batch that was green I believe so. Yeah. I think so. so I Love Dick call... might have aired, actually. Sorry? I Love Dick might have aired already. Oh, yeah. I Love Dick might have aired, yeah. Uh, but I mean, we weren't covering that, so it was whatever. But... No, no, no. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Johnson, though, I think that could pop up in the, the busy season. Hopefully not. Hopefully they push it to December, even. Like, December would be nice. Yeah. Compete with the, the OA, but just yeah. offset it by a week. Yeah. September, October, November? No. You're forbidden. And I already know Netflix is going to put Punisher in November. Yeah. 
And Amazon have this nasty habit of putting things up against things that we already want to watch from Netflix. Oh, I know. They're, they're, they're terrible for it. They need to stop it. They do. Um, and Netflix is pretty much always going to win. The one exception might be when this Nicholas Wendig reference show comes on. And if that's across from, like, like Daredevil season three, it's like, well, you know, so Daredevil, you're waiting until, like, Tuesday. <laughs> Reffing comes first, my, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, but like, I, I, we, we could alternate episodes, but do you really want to stop that to watch Daredevil? Mm. We probably Talk will, to be honest. Uh, In fairness, we probably will, but... Nah, screw fairness. Netflix has had the advantage for long enough. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so next up, exciting, exciting stuff. We had a trailer this week mm. for a TV show which... You know, I, I when I heard the premise of it long ago, and it was about cars that ran on human blood, I was like, oh, vampire cars, this sounds fun, just because it sounded so silly. And then the news came up uh, last week or the week before that they've actually greenlit it, it's got a date, it's coming this summer, it's coming in June, and uh, we, we read the synopsis and we thought, oh, this will either be the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. And one of the things we even said was, if this goes for a grindhouse-esque kind of feel, it, it feels like that's what it wants to go for. Like, if it does anything else, it'll feel maybe like it's out of touch with itself, if it's tone deaf. Yeah. But if it goes for Grindhouse, this could be a blast. So we got a trailer this week, and sure enough... They have embraced Grindhouse full-heartedly. More than I ever thought they would have, to be honest. This was not even... This wasn't even slight Grindhouse. This was full-on. This could have played before, like, Death Proof and Planet Terror. Yeah, the trailer is even like, hey, you like Grindhouse? Come check this out. Yeah, you get the badass chick. They even call the generic white like lead the, or the Ken doll yeah. actor. You got the the, the 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 engine of the car literally just eats people. It's pretty which is fantastic. fantastic. There's blood. There's gore. There's f bombs. There's f. Oh, it looks. I mean, don't get me wrong. It could still end up being terrible. But this is the tone. This is what they should it's be a shooting special for. Special kind of terrible, isn't it? Yeah, like, and, this could and be terrible. It was and like amazing. they were talking about how. Oh, you like these things? You like monsters? You like cults? Oh yeah, all, all uh, these other things from these movies, cannibals. Yeah, yeah, like all the stuff that you typically expect in this genre. We're gonna give it you all. I'm excited to try Blood Drive. I have to agree. I am too. Summer content worth having, folks. It's <laughs> happening. Yeah. Well, right. Last last year we had Mr. Robot. This year we've got Blood Drive. I think I think we're I think we're sorted. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get into some meteor stuff. Uh, well, actually, last one's uh, kind of quick as well, actually, but it's 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 it's, 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 un- it's kind of unfortunate. NBC's pulled Powerless from its schedule, which is of course the DC Comics comedy uh, set at a Wayne Tech company. Uh, they're not even sh- they're not even sure when the final three episodes are going to air. They've not officially cancelled it. In fact, you could say it's almost cancelled. I thank you very much, but. The uh, it, the ratings on the wall. It seems like it's it's, it's probably a goner. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd hope they put up the final episodes on their their websites. Just you know, because they've got them done, they might as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, it, it's a, it's kind of a shame. I, I, honestly, I think it says enough about the. I mean, I I thought it was getting a little bit better. I watched the first like five episodes. It seems to be the general consensus that yeah. it was improving as it went. It wasn't amazing by any means. It was it was like going from mediocre to okay to like having little moments of nice yeah, little yeah. things. My favorite part was still the opening titles every episode because that was just a really fun little DC thing. Uh, honestly, but it says a lot that the, the show wasn't that amazing. When honestly, my biggest like sort of thing away from this is that. Oh, I like Alan Tudyk and Danny Pudi. I like that they were getting a paycheck and now they have mm. to go look for more work. Like, when that's the thing I'm concerned the most about when I hear this news. It's obvious that I'm not going to miss the show that much. Yeah, yeah. And Tudyk's got a thousand other things to work on anyway. He does, yeah. He, I mean, he's he, in he, every he's Disney animated movie at the minute, so... Why wouldn't he be? He's a gem. Yeah, he, he, he's the villain in like the last five, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Also, Steve the Pirate. Aye. From Dodgeball. Next up, uh, we have some casting for season two of Riverdale. Mm. Uh, Mark Consolos, uh, Consolos? I don't think I say his name. Uh, he he played. Um, he was on Pitch. He was Oscar on Pitch. If you watched Pitch last year, uh, this isn't a, this isn't a good sign for Pitch's renewal. Admittedly, <laughs> I'm being cast on another network show. No, uh, all the articles did admittedly say that it's if Pitch does get renewed, then you know. Oh, right, they, they've they, got they option get, on him. Yeah, it's still in the contract for they get precedence. 
Oh, that's cool, right? So you may get pulled away then if Pitch gets a last minute renewal. Which which is why I think it's a little bit weird that this has been announced now because mm. you know if we will hear about Pitch relatively soon. In the I'm next still month. confident. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be within the next month, we get all these this, these news bits about what's been cancelled and what's been renewed. If you know, if Ethan's left, I feel like a lot of the stuff we watch have actually had the early renewals. There's only been a few it's, things there. It's, it's mostly Fox actually, Scream Queens, Fo- Exorcist, Fox and NBC because uh, Timeless. We're still waiting on Timeless. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, but yeah, he's he's been cast as Hiram Lodge, who's a character who we've, we've heard them talking about all season. Yeah. Uh, and we know he's coming because he, he's a main character in the comic books. We knew he was going to be a thing in the show eventually. Uh, my only and it was fine on pitch. It was it was good. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. My only my only question at this point is, is he going to grow a mustache? Because if not, we've got a problem. Mustache. I have no preference either way. Hiram Lodge has a mustache. God damn it. I really hope this is something you're just imagining and have just projected onto it and, and he doesn't does. actually have a moustache. Admittedly, this won't be quite the same outrage as James Gordon not having a moustache on Gotham because that is, a, that, that is a crime against humanity. He has a moustache. It's who he is. Yeah. And when he's he's when he's, and when he's down in the dumps, he may have a full beard because he doesn't shave the rest of his face. Like that. That's the, the two stages. Does regular Gordon's got a moustache. Like, times are rough, full beard. Yeah, pretty much. That, that's that's, that's, that's the thinking. only acceptable options for Gordon. All right, let's go on to the meaty stuff then. I mean, that's all the sort of quicker things out of the way. So first up, now this is a, this is a mix of news here. We've got a new show announcement. We have a kind of a change to a show, and we have a new service all wrapped up in a bow here uh, to announce. So DC Entertainment in 2018 are going to launch their own digital service. Uh, I say it's digital service rather than digital video service because it's not just going to be video. Now, admittedly, the articles only briefly mentioned that there would be other content. Like, they, they, there was like one sentence that said, oh, and there'll be comics as well, kind of thing. It's because the shows kind of take precedence at this, where well, they're quite big deals. Sure, I, I feel like the news here is more about the announcement of the show rather than the, the service. The service is just sort of it tagged is. along with it. Uh, yeah. But the comics thing is actually part of the most exciting part for me. Where if they, Because Marvel have got this thing called Marvel Unlimited where they offer all their comics older than six months uh, in a Netflix-style subscription service. If this ends up being that for DC, but with new original content, and then maybe their back catalogue of their movies and shows and stuff like that, yeah, they could be onto something. I think fans of DC would actually love this kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, so the, the original content, what, what are you getting with the service when it launches? Now, the thing that's uh, just changed a little bit, uh, well, I say it's changed, it's just we didn't know the name of it before, but we knew we were getting Young Justice Season 3, the animated show. Uh, there was two seasons, of course, in Cartoon Network a few years ago, quite a while ago now, actually, now I think about I think it. I it finished about 2014. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but we knew we were getting season three. We now know that that's not going to be called season three. They're, they're giving it a subtitle to sort of differentiate it. It's going to be called Young Justice Outsiders. Mm. And yeah, uh, there wasn't a, a whole lot of information on it. They, they just mentioned there'll be like a one of the plots will be like uh, the, someone's trafficking metahumans and things like that. It was, it was a very simple little description. There wasn't much there. Mm. But that's cool, right? So that's going to be exclusive to this new service. I'm glad to see it's coming, but obviously now we know where it's it's coming because obviously they announced it with no network and uh, yeah, there was we, a, we, a big question mark over it. And now it's like, oh right, you're launching your own thing. Oh, very good. Uh, but uh, and again, this leads to the question: Does the the previous seasons, does the all the other stuff, does Batman the animated series, does Superman the animated series, does Justice League Unlimited, does all that stuff go on the service? Batman Beyond, all that stuff. Yeah, all depends on rights management and you know what where the streaming rights are. Yeah, it may not be there at first, but I can see it. Whatever they can have there will be there. And just then when, when deals not run out, contracts, yeah. yeah, they'll stop making new contracts and everything will just come to the service. Uh, that's what you'd hope. Because uh, in terms of the live action stuff as well, just in terms of TV, you've got you know 50s Superman, 60s Batman, 70s Wonder Woman, Superboy, Lois and Clark, uh, Smallville. Bunch I'm of really stuff. hoping for Lois and Clark. Even even season ones of uh, like uh, like Birds of Prey and Constantine, like the the ones that, like in the Flash from the nineties, like the, the ones that had the one season and didn't go anywhere. Mm. Like you could you could throw all that stuff on there to add up a bit of value. Yeah, it's a case of they might as well. Yeah, their animated movies are obviously all the live action movies. Like, 
that that's the question do you get early access to anime movies do you do they hold them off like a delay so people still buy them separately i feel like with the the, the like the physical formats kind of not being as popular i feel like they might even just start making those animated movies like exclusive to this perhaps because i know at the minute there's the the digital releases are early i think it's like two weeks or yeah. a month whatever it is early uh, does that just become for the service rather than like your itunes and your amazon yeah and yeah exactly mm. it's i mean we don't really know what we're doing yet and it's, I feel it's like speculation obviously there's the possibility that later on they'll add more new original content i feel like because this service is so limited in terms of it's, it's not netflix where there's they're making tons of shows about different things i feel it's so limited that ideally they need to have at least one exclusive thing ongoing at all times so when i agree so when one of these, let's say these two shows, we're not mentioned the other one yet, I'm getting building up to that, but let's say these two shows, like one runs first, then the other one runs afterwards. There has to be something to come in after the second one finishes. Ideally you'd have both. Yes. Ideally you'd have one animated thing and one live action thing at all times, but I'm going to assume they're not going to do that. I'm going to assume they'll spread it out more. Yeah, and and also we don't know what their distribution method will be. Will oh, it has it? to be weekly. It has that, to. That's what I'm thinking. They do not. They, they can. If that's all they've got exclusive, they can't put it all up in one weekend and go. Yeah, nothing for eight months. <laughs> no, they can't. Yeah, they. they, they Especially have when to. you think Young Justice is probably going to be, you know, twenty-two odd episodes. Yeah. One assumes. So that's yeah. that's a good few months. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting like movies and stuff to be exclusive. Like, so, that's why I'm saying the animated movies feel like the obvious thing to make exclusive there. Yeah, like I said, forward. they're already early access for digital anyway kind of make yeah. the most of it and push your service i can i can see that yeah them, them being a the thing there i, I can, can also see, see it meaning we're going to get a lot more animated series perhaps yeah i, I was also going to say their um their digital comics the weekly ones oh, yeah. you know they're digital first anyway and then they collect them print but what if they give them an extra you know like they're they're on here before comicsology and then print I don't think they have to be on there before. I think they just have to be different. Because I would expect all the other comics, all the regular comics, to be like Marvel Unlimited and be like a time behind. Like right. yeah, six months yeah. to a year, depending on what they what I pick. Because they still want to sell new comic books. Like It, it wouldn't really so. be in their benefit to just give all the new comics away on the service. That said, they would have me for life if they did. Uh, <laughs> they'll probably have me for anyway, assuming everything else is fine. But yeah. You know, I, like it sounds like a good idea. So the other show, I, I, I left this for last because it's the meatiest part of the whole thing. Uh, it is, even though I'm probably more excited for Young Justice personally. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> but the live action show that's coming, uh, presumably with the launch of this, is Titans, which is a live action Teen Titans TV show. I actually do think it's really funny that both the shows here are both Teen Titan esque. Yeah. Also, you say Titans. this one's presumably with the launch. I don't know. I mean, Young Justice. We know that's already in production. Like they're they're already doing the voice work on it. We've we've seen that. DC Entertainment is launching their own digital service, which will kick off in twenty eighteen with a Titans series. Okay, not not all the articles said that, that I read. Then a lot uh, of them just said they're having Titans and Young Justice that, is launching with it on a bunch of them. That's how it's phrased in the Deadline article. So okay, fair enough. Uh, that's how I'm taking it. Uh, plans could change though obviously uh, so yeah this is going to be a live action uh, Teen Titans show it's going to focus on Dick Grayson he's going to be the leader as he should be mm-hmm. makes sense uh, and it also mentions that Starfire and Raven will be on the team but they don't mention any others uh, and it just says he'll become the leader of a fearless band of new heroes there's no plot but it's, it's Teen Titans I thought I'd saw somewhere else mention Beast Boy I was getting to that that was Jeff Johns on Twitter he said because right. he's involved in it he said he, he was happy to be writing uh, Teen Titans again then he put hashtag Beast Boy that would imply Beast which to be fair at that, at that point you've got Dick Raven, Starfire and Beast Boy we're missing what a Kid Flash maybe a Cyborg yeah kind of thing yeah, like at that point uh, they, they obviously can throw in some others like that's just a classic kind of team that I think yeah, of yeah yeah but we're already mostly there yeah uh, worth mentioning that Jeff Johns is involved Greg Berlanti is producing which begs the question uh, is this going to in some way be connected to the CW shows since it's him that's overseeing all that. Uh, I can't see it being in the actual Arrowverse because you've got a Dick Grayson and there was no Batman, but could it be in Supergirl's universe? Could be. Or even just in any of the other. Yeah. You know, it, we, we, they've very well established a multiverse but, in there. Yeah, but could we get a crossover? Could, could the Titans show up yeah. on their crossover? In theory. 
Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty John, cool. John, I do think it is interesting. Obviously, we've mentioned Dick Grayson there, and, and there's been recently at least a lot of rumors of uh, being a Nightwing film. Mm-hmm. And maybe this is a sign of uh, DC lifting these restrictions that we've seen over the past you know, decade or so where they hate having more than one version of a character well, in, yeah, in I mean, live action. I, I feel like they, they, they kind of did it by accident with The Flash, where they then ended up greenlighting a movie after the show already became a hit. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, we've done it now. And, then they had well, the, and now we're talking about a second Deathstroke, we're talking about second, uh, like... Oh, dead shot. We've already got a second dead shot. Actually, there's been two. One in the Arrow, one in Suicide Squad. Like, yeah. We're, we're... I mean, but I think in Arrow they actually made them pull out all the Suicide Squad characters before that movie started ramping up. Oh yeah, sure. But... So it's like this. This is really weird that they're going from that to okay. We we could have both. Yeah, I think it means that one of two things. One, it means they don't care anymore. Or it means it's on this. That or it means one of three things. One, they don't care anymore. Two, there's not actually an Nightwing movie planned, and it's just rumors. Or three, their argument here is that oh, it's on a DG at uh, a DG. It's on a DC digital service exclusive, meaning that only fans who understand that there's different versions of things yes. will be on it and care about it and will understand. I agree, and hopefully that's the the option. Uh, I will say my one fear, if they insist on sticking to their rule is that this is actually part of... And there is... A, it, it, the theory is, if this is the the rule and there is coming a, a Nightwing film, is this supposed to be in that universe? In that case, I'm suddenly less excited. Not a chance. <laughs> I really hope you're right. I, really I, I legitimately and think... I cannot remember the last time I said that. I legitimately think there's less than a 1% chance of it being connected to the movies. I, I really hope so. Berlanti's name especially. Yeah. So it says to me, no, this is part... If anything, it's part of the TV-verse. Even if it's like an alternate universe that we can maybe get crossovers like Supergirl has with Flash. But I, I don't think for a second it's going to be connected to the movies. That's what I'm hoping for most. Yeah. Just just a slight little fear. Yeah. I, I don't think it's anything to worry about. It's interesting, obviously, this has come about obviously after it fell through with uh, TNT. Yeah... Obviously, yeah, there was the Teen Titans show was going about, and TNT were developing, it, and then they decided not to make the pilot. Like that was yeah, as far as the management got there. shuffled around, I think. But mm. I don't think Greg Berlanti was involved at that time, so it's so, not. No. It very much seems like okay, we had that idea. Okay, Greg, do you want to do something with it? We're thinking of the service, and then it's developed from mm. there. You've got Jeff Johns involved with this one now. Uh, the, is it Teen Titans or is it just Titans? Because I'm just trying to ballpark the age. Mm, okay, so it might be a little bit older then. Yeah, more in line with the, the current Titans. That's an excuse to have them all be about 20. <laughs> Probably is. I'm that's, okay that's with what that. that is. Yeah. But maybe they'll have the history, though. Maybe, maybe they'll have the... We used to be a team when we were, like, 15, and we're coming back together now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and it's an excuse to have Dick be Nightwing right at the start. You know, he's already older. Which pleases me great. I'm, I'm, I'm admittedly, there's, there's hope in the movies right now because we're, we're getting Whedon, Zemeckis, and Matthew Vaughn apparently directing movies in the DC universe. Yeah, eventually. I think Whedon pretty much confirmed it. Yeah, because he was asked questions about it and he was he was giving answers. He was yeah, he was talking about casting Batgirl, wasn't he? Just, yeah, just this week. Uh, so I mean, there's hope there, but at least right now, based on the movies we've had, I am way more excited for a DC show than I am a DC movie. Every so keep in mind, we've got Black Lightning coming as well. Uh, yeah. On CW. Krypton, I'm less caring about, but that's existing well, on it, sci-fi. It, 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 it exists, you got yeah. got Titans, <laughs> so many shows. Like, it's actually... You could almost start a whole separate channel just dedicated to these goddamn comic book shows at this point. There's so many of them. Yeah, and, <sighs> and I'm still more excited for Young Justice than any of these. I haven't seen the first two seasons yet, so I, I, I do yeah. not share that opinion. You don't yet, but you will. Uh, let's see. I'm let's optimistic. See. We'll see. Anyway, uh, so that's the big DC news of the week. Uh, then new service, twenty eighteen. No word on price. Of course, I'd hope it would be reasonable, like five dollars a month. Like I feel like depends what's included. Because if they're doing original shows every month, you know, like consistently, if they've got a backlog service, I mean, Marvel Unlimited alone, I think, is ten dollars. That's true. Yeah, Marvel. But I'm just, I'm just thinking about like. I, mean, actually, I suppose the argument is it's more niche and more niche is more expensive because there's less people paying for it therefore you have to charge a bit more to make it yeah. 
uh, like you know economically viable. Okay, I'll accept that argument. But if they go more than ten, and if there's not constantly like one new show, yeah, yeah. it'll start to feel a bit iffy. I think, and that's assuming we get a backlog of comics. Like the, the way, yeah, yeah, this is working under that assumption. Yeah, the way it's phrasing where oh, there'll be comics elements and other digital content, it's like, well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> like to an extent, I'm guessing some of it, but it's definitely something we'll have to keep an eye on. Yeah, so here's hoping it means full backlog of comics because I'd love that for DC. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, so, did you ever watch Roseanne? No. No, I, I seen the odd episode. I, I wasn't like a big fan of it or anything. I, honestly, the most I know about Roseanne is that all the fans hate the last season with a fiery passion. Fair enough. It, it pulled a this season was all a dream kind of thing in some way and characters actually that's a good point. I'm pretty sure I mean character died. Which makes this news really weird. Anyway, uh, so Roseanne, apparently there's a, a reunion in the works uh, and Roseanne, Barr, John Goodman and uh, Sarah Gilbert are already involved. Uh, there's no network, they're shopping it around. Uh, the original series ran on ABC, and uh, yeah, but I'm, I mean, spoilers for Roseanne, a sitcom that aired like 20 years ago, but uh, John Goodman's character, I believe, had a heart attack and died, <laughs> unless they pretend that last season just didn't happen. Yeah, maybe they pull a community and go, ah, gas leak here. <laughs> yeah, or, or, yeah, or, or they just kind of, I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? Kind of spiritually reboot it. Yeah, but then do you please the fans? I think the fans will forget those la- that last season. <laughs> sure. Because uh, always the reason why I know that is because every time someone does a oh the worst endings of like in TV history, like, it always comes up. Oh, it's right, always okay. on the list. So Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I never really watched it. I don't really have much opinion. Obviously, I like John Goodman, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I just don't have any opinion on this. Yeah. Uh, it was okay from what I saw of it, but I, I never, never uh, wowed me. So yeah. maybe you just had to be of that era to get yeah, into it. Yeah, it could be. Uh, the other tidbit I know is I'm pretty sure they they had two different actresses for the same daughter, uh, and because of like scheduling, they'd, they'd switch between them. So it wasn't like the first daughter was there for like you know X number of seasons, and then they switched. It was now so this was a, a like the like I don't know their names, but it was like this one's a. A horror episode, and this one's a horror episode. Like, did... uh, begs the question: Which one do they bring back? Or if they're done a reboot, they could see their twins and just say, "Oh, they were always both here the whole time." <laughs> anyway, let's move on to some other stuff. Then, so HBO is uh, working on a TV version of Way of the Dog, or sorry, Way of the Dog, Wag the Dog. I don't know how I butchered that so much. Wag the Dog, which was a movie that came out in nineteen ninety seven. It was a political satire. Uh, and Robert De Niro was in it, uh, but it's been developed into a half-hour comedy series on HBO. Uh, the The film Wag the Dog follows a Washington D.C. spin doctor who is played by De Niro, who just days before a presidential election distracts the electorate from a sex scandal by hiring a Hollywood film producer, played by Dustin Hoffman, to construct a fake war with Albania. Right, so HBO describes the series as an ode to the classic film, but moving the weapons of mass destruction beyond politics and into business, entertainment, and yes, non-profits. In the 21st century, with the tools of social media at their hands, nothing is off limits to a small group of operators when it comes to manufactured reality. Fake news is so yesterday. Hmm. So the plot of the movie was basically they invented a war to distract from the fact that this this candidate was yeah, yeah. having a sex scandal. And, oh, we're at war, everyone, that, that, that doesn't matter anymore because we're at war. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So sound logic on their part. <laughs> do you know what? I really hope they change the title of this to Alternative Facts. I really, I really do. Because <laughs> it, uh, it, but they it, want the brand recognition, don't uh, they? Oh yeah, did you have you heard of this movie? No. Yeah, now did I. But just because just because I haven't doesn't mean that it hasn't got its no, to be fair, fans. To, to be fair, yes, if you hadn't heard of it, it doesn't really mean anything because <laughs> you're very limited in your knowledge of these things. Uh, I tend to know a lot of movies though, and I hadn't heard of this one, so. Yeah. Oh, shame on you, clearly. And it sounds, I mean, as, especially as they're, they're pitching it as a comedy, it sounds like a fun thing if they're going to be inventing stories. I mean, it says it sounds like it takes it out of politics and puts it into more business stuff. stuff. Uh, but even then, it sounds good. It's, it's basically spin doctors spinning yeah. things. It could be Pretty fun. Much. Yeah, definitely. It could be that too. Uh, all right, next up. 
Uh, Jesse Eisenberg is teaming with J.J. Abrams Bad Robot Productions for a new comedy called The Market. Uh, Eisenberg is writing and he's also going to be starring in it and directing it, which I never heard of him doing all these things before. So I, I guess uh, I've literally not didn't realize he did anything but acting. So yeah, and even then, barely. Yeah. <laughs> I don't actually dislike Jesse. I think in the right role, Jesse, like in the Social Network, he's perfect for that. Yeah. Lex Luthor, not so much. Doesn't help the writing though, does it? The writing doesn't help, but even with good writing, I don't think he was right for that role. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. And to be fair, as much as I hate that movie, I don't think anyone else was miscast. He was miscast. That's fair. Anyway, The Market. Uh, It centres on a recently widowed uh, Harold Katzman who moves to Pittsburgh to live with his adult son, uh, played by Eisenberg, uh, whose name is Stan. Both men simultaneously lose their jobs due to the changing American economy and their thrust into an unforgiving job market. So, hence the market of the title. Kind of sounds... Almost generic. Yeah, it sounds you know. really simple. Yeah, which isn't a bad thing, but it doesn't give us much to go on here. Nah, for comedies, that's that's actually almost good. Like, keep it yeah. simple and let the comedy come from the characters. Yeah, and obviously we don't know enough about his writing ability to see if, if this is actually going to be good. Oh, well, we seem to like adapting uh, books to TV shows. Well, movies as well, actually. We already talked about one of those earlier, but uh, a, lot, a lot of book series becoming becoming TV shows these days. Uh, the next one that seems to be in development from Paramount uh, TV and Anonymous Content, they've got the rights to The Vampire Chronicles, which was written by Anne Rice. Uh, it was yeah, 11 books in the series. Uh, Christopher Rice and Son is actually going to be writing on the, the show, uh, as well hmm. as being executive producer with his mother. Uh, the series revolves around the character of Lestat, uh, from his vampiric origins to various adventures around the world. Uh, and yeah, book, books from the series have been turned into movies before. Interview with a Vampire was based on one of the books in the series. Queen of the Damned was based on one of the books in the series. Yeah, I hear the first two or three of the books are pretty good, but then they're, they're really hit and miss after that. Yeah, I never read them. I never seen either of those movies. I'll probably see Interview with a Vampire at some point because I've heard that's meant to be... That, that yeah. has its fans. People like that. Uh, I do not hear the same things for Queen of the Damned, admittedly. But, eh, okay, I mean... I, I guess Vampire Diaries is off TV now. We need another vampire show to be on air. I mean, can't go too long with that one, can you? But we, I mean, we've got vampire cars. Isn't that enough? I would argue it is, quite frankly. <laughs> Especially since I feel like this is going to have a lot more romance uh, stuff, which, to be fair, is a very classic vampire thing. But I don't know, I've just been sick of it ever since... We had the yeah, Twilight it True Blood, played, doesn't it? We had the Twilight True Blood one two punch like at the same time, and it was like, oh, both these suck. And I, I'd basically lost all hope for vampires. And then a little movie called Let the Right One and came out, and I was like, you know what? Let's hope yet. Yeah. Let's hope yet. Yeah. Uh, now nah, I, yeah, I mean, it could be good. I, I, I have no real. Obviously, I'm cool for a horror show. I'm cool for a vampire show. I just, it depends what the the context is. What is the direction? Are they what sort of audience are they targeting? Are they going for the 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 romance angle? I don't know. It's kind of a case we just have to wait and see again because there's just not enough information right now for us to judge it. Hmm. You say wait and see a lot. You know that. Well, I'm very cautious when it comes to these things. I don't want to disregard something and go, "Oh, this is this is great." All right. Next up, Michael Mann and Michael D. Luca have acquired the rights to Hugh, 1968. And they're going to turn it into an 8 to 10 hour miniseries. So 8 or 10 episodes, depending on how the scripts work out, I guess. Uh, and it's going to be... It's uh, based on Mark Bowden's account of the Tet Offensive. Are you familiar with the Tet Offensive? I am not. It was in the Vietnam War. Not overly familiar with that war. And it is the... At least from this description here, it's telling me it's the bloodiest battle. It was like the worst battle in the in the right. war. Um. Uh, he's this guy's books. He's, he wrote uh, Black Hawk Down, which obviously was turned into a movie, a very good movie, in fact. I like that movie. Mm. Uh, it doesn't surprise me he actually wrote that because it, it's it's not the exact same, and this takes place over a longer time. But the idea that there's a small group trapped in like enemy mm. territory, there's, there's, it's got some similar vibes just from this description. But um, so the book Hugh uh, nineteen sixty is not actually out yet. It's coming out in June. 
uh, and Man's going to direct a number of the episodes of the miniseries, uh, so this is presumably planned for next year. So here's the description that we've got here. Hugh, the cultural and historical cap capital city, was the centrepiece of Hanoi's 1968 Tet Offensive, a surprise attack by the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong that sought to win the war in one stroke. Part military action and popular uprising, NVA infantry crossed mountains undetected with smuggled weapons awaiting them. This set the stage for a surprise attack that overran the city, except for two small military outposts. So I'm assuming it's going to be like these two small military outposts, kind of fighting yeah. for survival, that kind of thing. And I've heard this is quite quite bloody. Like there was like they had like schoolgirls on like bikes and stuff, like like for the enemy. Like they they were like sneaking stuff in and all sorts. Mm. It was like a sounds proper horrific. It could make for a <laughs> make for a really sort of heavy eight hour mini, I think. There's no word of uh like network yet, uh, but uh, presumably with the, this talent behind it. I like Michael Mann actually. Michael obviously he's, he's made some less than great movies, but when he's on fire, he is on fire. Uh, I love Manhunter, I love Heat, I love uh, Collateral, uh, all great films. So he he can make some great stuff. So with him behind it, uh, maybe this could be exciting stuff. Next up we have a another limited series actually it's called Waco. Melissa Benoist has been cast in it along with uh, Julia Garner. Uh, this is going to be an event series that is shooting, I actually just started shooting I believe, it's coming in January 2018 is when it's airing. It's going to be one of the things that launches with uh, Paramount Network which is them re renaming Spike TV. Ah uh, yeah. So Waco, uh, Michael Shannon and Taylor Kitsch are also in it, they've already been cast. And uh, it's also got uh, John Leogasmo, uh, I probably butchered that name, uh, Rory Culkin's in it, and Shia Wiggum's in it. Shia Wiggum, who showed up in Fargo this week, and I mentioned he pops up in everything, and there you go. <laughs> just just hammering the point home, isn't it? One more thing. Uh, Waco chronicles the 1993 standoff between the FBI, the ATF, and David Koresh's spiritual sect, the branch Davidians, uh, told from several perspectives of those mostly involved on both sides of the conflict. So we have another true story based around a, a bloody battle, by the sounds of it. <laughs> it's the topic of the year, apparently. Apparently it makes for a good many. Uh, yeah. This is six episodes, by the way. This one. Okay. No. That's not bad. I guess it's a it's a notable thing to you open your, your new... Well, it's not a new network, but your, your rebranding of a network. Yeah, you want to put a, a statement out and go, this is what we, we, we can do now. I'm glad you know, I versus what we've got at the minute. I'm glad I already know that Supergirl's been renewed because I'd, I'd maybe be worried that she was cast in this. <laughs> See, I wouldn't because you said uh, it's filming now, so okay, they're, they're sure, clearly okay. filming in the off period. Okay, with that knowledge, sure, but let's say that sentence wasn't there. Okay, fine. It was just Melissa Benoist has been cast in this. I'd be worried for Supergirl had had it already not been renewed, just a little bit. So yeah, that's uh, Waco because uh, the this set in Waco, Texas. That's what it, that's what it happened. So. And I actually checked the, the pronunciation of that. I was a little concerned. You wanted to know if it was Waco or Waco, didn't you? Yeah, I really wanted to say Waco. I thought, <laughs> is this a show about a crazy man? And it's like, no, it's a thing called Waco. Uh, all right, so next up, and kind of, I've got one little tidbit to add on after this, but this is the last full news item. Uh, I am Global Television and Eliza Dushku, along with David Goyer, um, one of these is <laughs> uh, is developing a TV adaptation of The Black Company. Oh, look at that, based on a series of books. Uh written by Glenn Cook. It's a fantasy series. So we had Wheel of Time last week. Uh, this week we're getting the Black Company. Uh, Dushku is set to star in it as well as producing it. Uh, she's going to play the lady. Uh, that's the character's name. Uh, there's ten books in the, the series. Uh, the adaptation will include the forthcoming book, Port of Shadows, which takes place between the first and second book. So it sounds like the first season would be the first book plus this in-between book. Yeah, Probably or at least they're, they're saying, yeah, assuming we've run for multiple seasons, this is coming in here. Like, it's it's not going to be ignored when we get to that point. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the story follows the Black Company, a mercenary unit that carries out nefarious deeds across a token-esque landscape, often at the behest of the lady in order to maintain her power. When the men of the company discover that the embodiment of good has been reborn, they must re-examine their loyalties. Okay. So Sounds it's like a it's interesting. A, it's a Middle Earth where evil's in power, in charge, yeah. and like good starts to emerge. So it's kind of like a, it's almost like a Star Wars story in a Middle Earth setting, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like you, you got the Sith in control, you know, 
Yeah. yeah. That's what it feels like. And uh, it sounds like Elijah Dushku is going to be playing uh, uh, the Emperor. <laughs> Essentially. I'm, I'm more than down for that, frankly. <laughs> yeah, I'll play with it too. Uh, but there goes another, there's another fantasy book series. Again, no network. We're getting all these news bits with no networks yeah, attached. Yeah, we often don't hear them about them this early with our networks. I mean, we get the odd one here and there, but not I wonder, this many. I wonder where this will end up. Like, Are we going to get this in real time, both at cable networks? Maybe one will be on a streaming service? Like, you know, Where, where are they going to go? Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to predict right now, isn't it? Uh, but there you go, that's that's all the main news. The only last little bit I wanted to throw in here at the end, I just wanted to give you an update on the potential writer's strike, mm. just to close off here. Uh, there's no specific news, that this, they've still been talking, they had the vote that said that they will strike if indeed they don't get a deal. Yeah, they got the, the vote to authorise a strike. Yeah, uh, from their members. Yeah, so that that's if, so if they don't make a deal by the deadline, they, they, they're going to strike. So, I, I know that vote passed overwhelmingly, far oh yeah. higher than did the last strike. It was like 96%. It was, yeah. it was huge. And the turnout was higher as well. Yeah. Uh, so the update I want to give you, I just want to let you know when that deadline is. I want, mm. I want you to know when we have till for them to make a deal. Do you know this? Off I, the top do. Of your head? I do. I do okay. off the top of my head, yeah. All right, All right okay. Uh, it's Tuesday. If we yeah. hit midnight, Monday night, get into Tuesday, uh, presumably Pacific time, because, you know, LA is the base for everything. Uh, if they don't make a deal by then, we've got a strike. Yep. If, if, if not by there, strike is on the table. And oh man, and the fact that we've heard nothing this week really, other than we're authorized it. There's no been like, oh, we're getting closer. I, I, to be, I actually did read something earlier today that was a lot, oh, little bit okay. more promising. It wasn't like a huge thing. It was just the WGA were saying, oh look, a deal is very possible. It's not like we're at this stage where it's, it's it can't happen. There was mm. a possible deal, and they, they, I think it was uh, a deadline article that sort of mapped it out. Like, like if you divide the cost of what they're asking for between all the big networks, this is what what it will cost each one. And it was all in millions, but at the same time, it's like in the, the grand scheme of things, like how yeah, much I, is it? I read one that said to the total, the differences of the deals kind of came to about three hundred and fifty million. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it, it, this was all split up though, so it was yeah, like eighteen yeah. million at Fox and twenty three million at uh, maybe right. CW or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it said it came to about three fifty yeah. in total, which is like okay, that's a lot. But given the amount that your stuff can make, is it well, it's perspective. That sounds like yeah. a big number when you just say it like that. But like, how how does that divide up? Who's paying for that? Where's all this money? Like, there's a lot of things to consider. There is. Uh, that just sounds like a lot when you add up what they're saying. Because if I said to you, Connor, let, let, let's say for for you being on this this weekly news video, uh, I was giving you. Ten dollars a week, right? Sure. Ten dollars a week, and then you came back to me and said, "I want to go up to 15 But I'd be like, "No, that's like it's hundreds more a year. That's how much it's going to cost me." In fact, even there, I think I think this number that they're talking about is for the, ne- the the duration of this next contract, which is probably going to be ten years, I think. Yeah, probably five or ten years, whatever whatever length the contract is, uh, until they renegotiate. So this is not even like over a year that it's going to cost three hundred million split up against all these companies. It's going to cost that over five years, maybe or whatever. yeah. It's not like it's a lump sum. If it was, a, it, it's not. <laughs> it's the, the whole to ransom. Give us three hundred million dollars right now. You're going to get no yeah, more scripts. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's crazy, but the you know they're holding their ground at the minute. It seems. And again, it's not like no one's getting paid this money directly. This is. It's, it's all these little things adding up. It, it's more yeah. residuals for streaming things. It's guaranteed contracts for this because seasons are getting shorter. It's, it's this and this and so many little factors. And again, it's mostly digital stuff. It's mostly the changes to the way we watch stuff in the last I think few years. The fact that it is all these little things is what complicates it more because there's not oh we can just make a blanket deal and this covers it. It's they have to deal with each thing on a case by case basis Which, and they've got to. And the thing is, is, as much as I really don't want a strike, I do say with the writers for the most part and all this because. The truth is, I, I fully believe that if the producers, if the studios can get away with screwing them over, they will. Oh, I believe that about... The, the, that doesn't apply just to writers. Oh, of course, if, of course. If producers and studios can get away with screwing over anyone, they will. Yeah, they will, but <laughs> specifically in this case, we're talking about writers. Yeah. And I think, yeah, like things have changed. We're getting shorter seasons, so they're not getting as long of contracts. We're... we're and, you know, te- I think there was a time when the studios were trying to argue that, you know, oh, stuff on, like... Uh, on streaming services, that doesn't count as a television broadcast, so you're not getting paid that the same thing for that. You're getting paid less, or you're getting... Yeah. 
and that's what a lot of the last strike was about and it's gotten even worse because now I mean I, th- I think it is every five years we, we, we get a new contract in this thing I'm pretty sure one of them mentioned that, that it was about five years ago the last one and I think what's funny in that five years how big Netflix and yeah the game's changed Amazon and Hulu and all these other services like it's changed everything's changed so yeah the rules have to change with it and if they're not changed, then they're all left out in the cold, which is why they're having these debates. It's why they're possibly striking. And I'm with them. I just don't want it to last too long because I want content. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, we, we appreciate you. You're probably doing the right thing. But to, and... but to be fair, though, they feel the same way. They they, they would rather yeah, be making content. they'd and... rather be working, I'm sure. Yeah. They, they don't want to strike, but they'll have to if they don't get, get meet these new terms. So Exactly. And we've got, what, four days? Ish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three, three, four days, uh, and we'll find out. So next week on the news video, we will have <laughs> news of a strike or news of a deal. It's uh, it's going to be touch and go, folks. Hoping for a deal. So there you go. All right, that's the news. That is that is all the news from this week. So why don't we uh, uh, talk about our favourite episodes of the week? Do that. We could do that. Yeah. This is a, it's kind, a tough week, isn't it? It's a kind of tough week. I I am going to. Joe's really annoying about this is I feel like this would change had we already watched the third episode of Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> because I'm going to say Handmaid's Tale episode two. Hmm. <laughs> okay. By a smidge. Obviously Saul was great. Saul was fantastic. But it was probably the weakest of the three of the season so far. And Handmaid's Tale I agree with that. came out and it was this big, like, oh, this is great. And episode two was an improvement over episode one. I feel like it's doing a lot of great things. Uh, but there's a lot of things like I, I, I think Dear White People is in the run for this. I thought that was very, very sharply done. Uh, Fargo had a good episode. Lots of things had a good episode, but yeah. Handmaid's Tale episode two, with with the the asterisks that I have not seen episode three yet, and that <laughs> possibly could change had I seen that. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. I think I'm actually gonna go with Fargo because right. I had a lot of fun with it, and if you watch our review, you'll see. Yeah, we we went off the deep end on this show mm-hmm. already, and it's been a while since I've felt like that. And I al- I always know when we've went off the deep end because the dislike count is higher. Yeah, yeah, but if it's it's been a while since I felt like that with the show where we've just gone off the deep end on a review like that. And uh, I get I get if, if it's made me feel like that and you know experience that, then yeah. All right, there you go. Uh, that's this week's favourites and I guess I will tell you if anything new is coming up in the next week there is one thing that's coming up one new thing it's uh, Sunday night we're getting the first episode of American Gods uh, from Stars. Based on very the... excited about this yeah based on a Neil Gaiman book uh, so yeah, obviously we're going to be covering that uh, and that's another reason why it's a very busy time of year because all these shows are on and all the network stuff's still on really would I kill them to hold this off till June it's crazy because obviously Last time we had Doctor Who, that was in the fall. That, that's pushed forward to spring now. Oh, they'll try to so kill us. That's what they doing. are. It's like everything's just, it's all concentrated into this like six week period oh. of overlap hell. God damn it. But there you go. That is uh, this week's video. Let us know what you thought of any of the news items that we brought up in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter, mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. And uh, individual Twitters are on the screen for our everyday ramblings if you want to for some reason see them uh, but that's us guys so thank you very much for watching once again keep watching TV have you got any vanilla